What's going on fish nerds? Welcome back and happy Thanksgiving. Uh, time has flown by and uh, thing is things here in the fish room have been kind of at a standstill ever since we moved into this new house and started working on the new fish room. I basically got everything running and kind of in a, a state where it can stay for a little while but I haven't really made progress on the fish room. A lot of that is because I don't have the electricity that I need out here in this room. I don't have the plug-ins. I've got one little overhead light and I've got one plug. So I actually, I don't even have lights on any of the tanks except for the one directly behind me. And uh, if, I'll show that you guys that here in a little while. But today we are going to be putting together my drip system. Uh, I won't take you through the whole process of actually putting it together. Actually, most of it's already put together. I just need to plug it in and then put the drip emitters in the tanks. I will show you the drain lines and uh, I'll show you all the pieces that you need to put together a drip system of your own. I mean, I know there's several videos detailing this, but it's what I'm working on. So I may as well take you guys along and show you what I'm doing and how I've put this thing together. But uh, I'll show you this, the one tank that's got lights on it. I mean, I could show you the other tanks, but I mean, you can't see anything. So this is the tank that's got lights and it's also the only tank right now that has any plants in it at all. Uh, I don't have nearly as many fish as I had before the move. Uh, I consolidated a lot. I gave a lot of fish away uh, just to make the move easier and all of that and kind of somewhat starting fresh with the new fish room. But we've got our rainbows in here. We got our Pseudomagill Gertrude, Aru 2s here, the, these little guys darting around. And we've got one Kamaka rainbow in here as well got a couple of super red bristle nose got our uh, peacock gudgeons in here as well looking really nice got a male and a couple of females and here in the cave we've got our worm line pleco and he is awesome he's what pr probably my favorite pleco this worm line he is outstanding but uh, that's what we've got going on in this tank. The only tank that I can really even show you, and it's not a whole lot to look at just because, I mean, it's in a holding pattern. This, Most of the fish in this tank aren't even going to stay in this tank once I get things set up down here the way I want them to be. But uh, I've got a light on this one just because we've got the plants in this tank. And, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. But let's get started on this drip system. All right, guys, so in order to run this drip system we needed to have a faucet so i cut into my main water line here uh i'm on the other side of the water heater and furnace fish room is in there uh still haven't walled it off by the way obviously as you can tell but i cut into this water line here this is a cold water line and uh, just glued this in here we've got a this is technically a boiler drain valve but it's rated for pressure and potable water so we got this all glued in nice and neat up here and the reason we use this is because it has this threaded uh, hose and uh, faucet that we can affix a hose to, which we're not going to use a hose. We're going to kick it off with a pressure regulator. And uh, let me show you that. All right, guys. So when you're putting together a drip system, this right here is a very important piece that you need to have this pressure regulator. This uh, screws on like a hose. You can see I've got this old uh, faucet splitter that it's still attached to from uh, where I had it in the garage at the old house. But uh, this black piece here is a pressure regulator. What that does is it causes the water going into your line to be at a regulated pressure so it doesn't just come out at full force. It brings it down to either 30 or 40 PSI, something like that. And uh, all these pieces, I will put uh, Amazon affiliate links down below in the description uh, if you guys wanna check those out. If you're looking to put together a system like this yourself, I'll have links to all those parts down there in the description below so that you can uh, get everything you need. But this here is not actually all one piece. From here up is the pressure regulator. This right here is just a threaded adapter because uh, on the end of this regulator, there is another three quarter inch threaded end where you could put a hose on that. But we don't wanna put a full on hose. We just wanna put on this quarter inch water line here, this irrigation line. So this uh, little piece here just screws onto that like a hose would. And then it's just got this little T-barb here 
for us to squeeze our irrigation tube, our water line, onto that. And so we're bringing down the pressure here so that that way we don't blow out this little thin irrigation line. Because if we put in full pressure coming from your faucet into this little line, you're going to blow your drip emitters off. You're going to possibly blow the hose off of your T-barb and all kinds of stuff like that. And so those are problems you don't want to have. So we've got a pressure regulator and then we've got an adapter to bring it down to a, uh, a T-barb. I keep calling it a T-barb. It's probably just called a barb. It's a quarter inch barb. And uh, so then we have our quarter inch water line, which here runs into this little DIY, which obviously this will not be on Amazon because it's DIY, I made this. This is just two feet by two inches of PVC pipe. This is a carbon pre-filter and I did put a, uh, a threaded cap here on the end. So when I wanna change the carbon out of this, I can just unscrew that cap, dump the old carbon out, put new carbon in, which I'm actually about to do before I hook everything all together what that does if you are on a well you do not need this if you're using well water you do not need this that would be overkill but if you are on city water like me and you've got uh, chlorine in your water this carbon in this uh, pre-filter here I mean this is two inches by two feet of carbon that's gonna last a long time for just a drip system that carbon is going to pull the chlorine out of your tap water so that way you don't uh, poison your fish with a bunch of chlorine. And so self-explanatory, I just took little barbs, little barbed connectors uh, and glued into the end after I dr drilled a hole in there. And I've got a video uh, I'll try to remember to link up where I actually built this and put it together. And uh, so you guys can go check that out in an older video when I actually made this thing. And then line coming out the other end and runs all the way to here. This is a very dirty duckweed covered non in focus. There we go. Drip emitter. Now this blue one here is a half gallon per hour drip emitter with uh, the regulated pressure in the water line and all that. This will allow half a gallon of water to drip out of this little emitter per hour. So if you leave this running all day long for 24 hours, that's 12 gallons per day. So um, really, if you're, if you're dealing with one tank, which really if you're dealing with one tank, I don't know why you're putting together a drip system. But if you're dealing with one tank, you've got one drip emitter, and say it's a 40 gallon tank, you leave this running for 24 hours, you've essentially done a 25% water change. I know that's not perfect math, but not all of the water dripping out of your tank is gonna be the old water. There's gonna be a mix of some of the new water going out as well. So we'll just call it 25% water change if you left this running all day for one day. So you could just turn on your drip system for one day, turn it off tomorrow, and you've basically done a 25% water change if you've got a 40 gallon tank using a half gallon per hour. Uh, and there's these come in different uh, rates of flow you can get half gallon per hour one gallon per hour two gallon per hour four gallon per hour you can choose the emitter you you want to use and there are also adjustable ones like this that you can actually twist to make the water come out faster or slower depending on uh, your settings if i can get it to focus we are having a hard time focusing down here in this dark basement Focus, dude. Focus, dude. There we go. Now you can see it. So this little guy here just twists so you can tighten it or loosen it to make water come out faster or slower. Set that one however you want. And these actually go a lot slower on their lowest setting than the half gallon per hour. So if you want to just leave it on all the time, but you don't want to do a full 12 gallons per day, I actually recommend doing one of these and just put it on the lowest setting because it's actually a lot slower than the half gallon per hour emitters. He came out a little bit. He was all up and ah, see, whenever I get up and get too close to the tank, he goes back there where you can't really see him, but very good looking fish. 
So all in all, pretty simple setup to actually get the dripping occurring into your tank. As for getting water out of your tank, because I mean, you're dripping water in all the time, you need to be, have a way to drain out of your tank. What we're working with here, we've just got a drain line. I've got the, the tank drilled. We've got a little PVC coming up to, this is where the water level will be once we get the, the drip going and uh, water will rise up to here. Then it'll flow into this overflow line. And that is true in all of these tanks. There's nothing in this one, by the way. So up here, line comes out, goes into the tank below it. That's just how I've got mine set up. Yes, that puts the, the tank below this one at a risk of catching whatever diseases are in this tank. I know that's not total tank separation, but it's a straight down the line thing. And it's a, it's a risk I'm willing to take, um, but it's not like the entire fish room is on the same system. And I've seen fish rooms set up where they're all on the same system and everything turns out fine. Just be careful with your fish. I mean, if you want to take the precaution of having everything separated, more power to you. But I'm, I'm willing to accept the risk that if this tank gets sick, I have to assume this tank is sick as well. You know, and that's, that's just what I have to deal with. Um, anyway, this tank drips down into this one. This one, when it drains out, goes down here into this line. Same with the bottom tank on that rack and the bottom tank on that rack. They all go into this line here going along the floor, which goes all the way out past the water heater into my floor drain. Also guys, real quick, one thing I wanna mention before we go, you guys know that FlipAquatics.com is a proud channel sponsor. We're super proud to be working with them. Rob and Amanda are good friends of mine and uh, we're stoked to be working with them and have them sponsoring the channel. And so we do wanna make mention, with today being Thanksgiving, tomorrow being Black Friday, they do have a sale going on right now. 15% off on flipaquatics.com. I'll throw the, the little graphic up here that uh, that has all the information and the coupon code and all of that in order to get the discount. So go check them out. Give them some love and tell them that we sent you. And as for now, I will say God bless you fish nerds. We'll see you next time.